Hi, good evening. We are here for an event honoring some victims and uh, we have Heidi Kuhn with us. So please introduce yourself. I'm Heidi Kuhn. I am the Shelby County Criminal Court Clerk. However, a long time ago, um, in early 2000s, I was the executive director of the Crime Victim Center and I actually founded this event. Whoa. Yeah. Well, um, I didn't know it. Yes. Many people don't. So thank you for mentioning mm -hmm. it and thank you for founding something like this. Uh, so tell us about this event. So this event was a vision that I had about 20 years ago, wanting some place where individuals could really honor the victims of homicide. And we wanted something serene. And this was the place that I came up with. And it has been a wonderful event ever since then. Every year they have this wonderful event of this lit memorial. And you can see that there are so many people here that want to honor the victims, but it's not mm -hmm. only honoring their death, but also celebrating their life and who they are. Mm -hmm. um, so we are going to be talking about so many things. Yes. I'll be recording it. And um, I'm saying this live. Yes. That I'm going to have you on my <laughs> show soon enough. Now, you promised that before, so we'll see I how we make it happen. See, I, I have not not kept my promise yes yes that's true you are admitting to it yes yes so we are going to see the crowd over here that has assembled in the botanical garden in memphis tennessee
Lift him up, 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 oh, then to see, he said I'd fall, all men unto me, my name is Sandy Bromley. I am the director of the Division of Community Services for Shelby County, in which the Crime Victims and Rape Crisis Center is one of our departments within our division. Stand here. I'll just keep talking and we'll see. I'll smile pretty, it's fine. So I was thinking about the topic for today, and, and I'm not I'm gonna keep this super brief because I wanna turn it over to Clerk Coon. Uh, but I was thinking about the topic today about permission to heal. And one of the things that I, I just was on a podcast yesterday, not trying to drop that, but I was, and we were talking about the fact that everyone deserves to heal. Even after the most horrific things that can happen to us, even when we feel like it's not possible to heal, when we're right in the middle of it, everyone deserves to heal and everyone deserves to live a life full of joy. And I love, love that the choir picked that song this, this evening because I had no idea that you were gonna talk about joy, but that's exactly what I feel every single day after working with countless numbers of survivors over the last 24 years. Everyone deserves to feel joy even after the most unimaginable tragedy. So thank you all for being here. Thank you God for this weather. Thank you for allowing us to share in the memory of your loved ones. I'm gonna turn it over to Clerk Coon. Clerk Coon. See, I even got it wrong even there. Uh, and she's gonna talk a little bit about her history with this event. Thank you, Sandy. So I stand in front of you today as your Shelby County Criminal Court Clerk. However, I stand with you victims because over 20 years ago, this park, this event was my vision. 20 years ago, I looked for a location in which individuals could come and really pay homage to their loved one in a, such a serene and beautiful location. But not just because they died, but because they lived. This is a place this park is a wonderful example of life and how it transitions. There's growth, there's blooming, there's death, and then there's rebirth again. And so this was the perfect location that I thought we need to have the homicide memorial here. And although I was hoping this would not be an event that we continue every year, and I noticed that the, the quilt grows every year, so yes, I stand in front of you as the criminal court clerk, but I stand with you family members and law enforcement and all of those that deal with homicide to support you because I'm here with you and I will always have a heart for those that are victims of crime. So I'm so honored to stand with you today and I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Let me introduce your MC for this evening is Miss Kiera Ellis. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Clerk Coon, for your service and for your vision so many years ago that we can still gather here today. A few housekeeping things before we get started. Um, if you need to use the bathroom at all, you can follow the lights. Um, they will begin to illuminate as the sun goes down. Um, and we also have our amazing CDRCC staff here as well in tie-dye shirts. They're all raising their hands right now, should you need anything. So go ahead and take a look around, familiarize yourself with those spaces, and they will be happy to help you. If you need water, there's some available at the sign-in table.
All right, first we're going to have our invocation by Pastor Craig Freeman. Craig Freeman is the executive pastor of First Baptist Church Broad and the secretary of Braced, Broad Avenue Community and Economic Development Corporation. He's been part of the First Baptist Church Broad family for over 20 years, where he serves in many capacities. In addition, as a project manager, Pastor Freeman was instrumental in bringing the Broad Avenue Sports Complex to the Binghamton community. Please join me in welcoming for our invocation, Pastor Craig Freeman. Good evening to everyone and thank you, uh, Ms. Ellis, for the introduction. Uh, to all of our distinguished officials and honorees, to Chief Davis, Director Bromley, we just, I'm, as a Baptist preacher, as you say, Ms. Bromley, that was a great way to welcome and bring everyone into this moment. And I just want to come, I have one passage of scripture before we ask for uh, prayer. And it's about this moment, what this moment means and how it relates. Because I believe in the God who has the power to heal and to give hope to each and every one that is gathered on tonight. The passage is Psalm 42 and 5. It simply says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Shall we pray? God of hope and healing, we come to you during this tender moment of grief, remembrance, even sometimes of confusion with hurt and many mixed emotions. Our days can be very, very challenging, but you are the God of strength. Help us to find peace and comfort in the knowledge of your loving mercy and give us a light to guide us out of darkness into the blessed assurance of your love in Jesus Christ our Lord that we pray to our God and with respect to all of the faiths who are gathered here on tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Freeman. Next, we're going to learn a little bit more about the purpose of this event. Please join me in welcoming my enthusiastic coworker, Katera Davis. She is a member of the Cross Services team and she's a crime victim advocate. So come on up, Katera. Tell us a little bit more about why we're here. This Good afternoon, everyone. That was a wonderful prayer, by the way. The CPRCC hosted the first annual Garden of Lights Memorial Celebration in 2005. This memorial serves as a living legacy and tribute to the many victims who lost their lives to homicide here in Memphis and Shelby County. This is a sanctuary for the survivors of homicide to mourn, remember, and honor their loved ones. This is a place for them to engage in the healing process in a tranquil, safe, and sheltered environment. In 2007, Congress designated September 25th as the National Day of Remembrance of Murder Victims. The CBRCC combined these events to bring attention to the impact of the murder, the impact that murder has on families and communities, and highlight the resiliency of survivors like yourself. As part of this memorial, we have included a solar lights display. These lights have been placed along the entryway of this site to this anonymously beautiful donated brick walkway. These lights symbolize the lives of our loved ones that have been taken. They serve as a pathway of love, a reminder of hope, and encourage the courage to heal. Thank you, Katera, for reminding us why we're here today. And although none of us per se want to be here, what a worthy cause, right? Next, we'll have a message to our victims from Stephanie Quartermarsh. She is our lead homicide counselor. So join me in welcoming Stephanie.
Good evening, and thank you for being here. It is heartwarming to see so many of you tonight on this National Day of Remembrance of Murder Victims. Your presence shows your unwavering commitment to healing. Give yourself permission to heal. Grief isn't a map you follow. There are no set destinations you must meet to heal. Grieving is different for everyone. It's a deeply personal experience and one you should allow yourself to feel. Feel all of the feelings. Some days are going to be unbearable and feel like you can't survive them. Believe me, you can. Some days are going to feel like you're walking around on broken glass, too afraid to make a move because of what might come to the surface. Where there is no struggle, there is no strength. Some days will feel like a daze as if you aren't a part of your body and things aren't real. It's important to stay connected to yourself and the supports around you. Some days won't feel so bad and you may feel guilty for that. That's a natural reaction, but try to get some relief while you can. There's no wrong way to grieve. Your tears and pain aren't weaknesses. They're vital for healing, allowing you to express grow, and move forward after loss. Remember, you're not alone in the pursuit of healing. Whether you've engaged in counseling sessions, joined a support group, found strength and faith, or leaned on family and friends, your journey is valid and courageous. Amid grief, you discover your inner resilience and find support from those who genuinely care about lightening your burden. We are a community bound by shared experiences, empathy, and compassion. Tonight, we honor our lost loved ones and draw strength from one another. As you continue your healing journey, know it's not a straight and narrow path. You'll experience both dark and light moments. Embrace the support around you and remember to take care of yourself. You cannot pour from an empty cup. We are here for you, here to help, here to heal, here to hope. If you are interested in counseling, or monthly support group, please give me a call. Once again, my name is Stephanie Quartermarsh and it is an honor to be in your presence tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much to our compassionate counselor, Stephanie, for those beautiful words of hope, help, and healing to our victims. I encourage you to carry those words with you through tonight and as you continue to move through your healing journey and draw on strength from them. Next, we'll have another selection from the Shelby County Choir. guest singer tonight. This is Pastor David Rose. He's going to lead this song for us. I don't know about that guest part, but we came here to encourage you tonight and that the sun is going to shine if we just hold out. We know that you may be hurting on the inside and you may be struggling, but if you would just hold on, the sun is going to shine. But for clarity's sake, we want you to know that the sun we're talking about it's not the sun that rises in the morning and heat the atmosphere. No, that's not the sun we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. The sun we're talking about is the sun of the true and living God, yeah. the King of kings and the Lord of Lord, none other than Jesus Christ himself. The sun is going to shine if you just hold out. Come on, y'all. The first words of this song, it says this. So many. So many nights. So many nights I've cried. I've cried. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah, I've cried. I've cried for better days. Yes, I have. For better days. I've prayed for. I've prayed for. I've prayed and I've prayed and I've cried and I've cried and I've cried and I've cried. Listen. But through it all. But through it all. I know. Here's the one thing I know. And if I just hang in there, there's no doubt. The sun is going to shine. The sun is going to shine. Oh, I hope you're listening to me. Yes, I am. If I, hold <laughs> if I can just hang in another day, the 
sun is going to shine. But I got to do something. I got to hold out. Now, there's another significant verse to this song that says sometimes. Sometimes I feel Sometimes I feel all alone. alone. <laughs> Anybody out here know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one around, no one can seem to comprehend the magnitude of what I'm going through. No one around. They just came on can't seem to understand. To call on. But here's the one thing that I must do. I must. I must I must endure. Yes, I must. I must endure because in my mind I know. For I know. <laughs> Here we go. We go back to the yeah. sun again. The sun, he's going to shine. Yeah. The sun is going to shine. He's going to come through if I can just if I can just hold out. If I hold out. If I can just hang in there another day. If I can just hold on for another minute. The sun is going to shine. The sun is going to shine if I hold out. If I hold out. But here's the part that I like. I want to encourage you with these words. Listen. Weeping may, may endure. It may endure for a night. But the one thing you got to know is that trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. <laughs> you got to know that joy is coming in the morning. If you can just hang on in there. If you can just hold out, if you can just, if you can just wait until the morning, yeah, uh huh. Just wait until the morning. Yeah. Listen, y'all. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go of my faith. Of my faith. And the nucleus of this song simply says this: the sun. <laughs> Oh, he's going to shine on your situation if you hold out. He's going to come in and strengthen you if you just hold on. The sun is going to shine if you can just hold out. And we want to take you back there. We want to encourage you again with these words. We want you to know that we've been. Oh, that sounds good to me. We want you to know that trouble, it may come for a minute, but it don't last always. No, it don't last always. You gotta hang in there. You gotta hold on. You gotta believe and you just gotta, you gotta hang in there and just wait because joy. It's coming. It's coming if you can just hold on. You gotta do something though. You gotta hang in there and you just gotta wait for it. You gotta wait for it. <laughs> yeah. No, I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go. I won't let go of my faith. Of my faith. Here we're going back to remind you again because here's why I'm holding on because the sun. The sun is gonna shine. He's gonna shine on your situation. Yes, he is. The sun is gonna shine. He's gonna shine because he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The sun is gonna shine. Before there ever was a war, Jesus was before there ever was. The sun is gonna shine. When you drop your tears, he catch every last one of them in a box. The sun is gonna shine. The sun is gonna shine if you just hang on in there. The sun is if you just trust and believe, the sun is going to shine. The sun is going to shine. It's going to shine. The sun is going to shine. I hope you're listening to me. The sun is going to shine. Come on, y'all. It's going to shine. It's going to shine. It's going to shine. The sun is going to shine. It's going to shine. It's going to shine. But I got to do something. I just got to, I got to hold out. That's the nucleus of the sun. The sun is going to shine. It's going to shine. It's going to shine. It's going to shine.
if I hold out. That's where you praise God at right there. That's where you praise him at right there. That's where you praise him at. Yeah. <laughs> so much Shelby County Choir for those encouraging words. Can we give it up again for Shelby County Choir? They're rocking it. Next, I have the honor of introducing our keynote speaker. Kay Darrell Cowan is a native of Memphis's historic Whitehaven community. He's the executive, he's the founder and executive director of Heal 901, a local nonprofit organization. After graduating from Fairleigh High School in 2004, Mr. Cowan ventured to Mendota, Minnesota, where he earned a degree in mass communications from Brown College. Director Cowan's life experiences, education, and love for his city culminated in 2018 with the founding of Heal 901. His organization focuses heavily on violence prevention, mentorship, and skill building, primarily in youth and justice-involved communities. Heal 901 strives to empower and support youth to reach their full potential. This looks like providing scholarships, creating safe environments throughout the community, and proudly nurturing the overall well-being of our youth as a licensed mental health and substance abuse treatment provider. Heal 901's motto is increasing human potential while decreasing human suffering. Director Cowan is motivated by the belief that Memphis can be a city where people live work and thrive in safety. When he's not busy furthering this vision and pouring into the community, Darrell can be found pouring into and making memories with his family, his beautiful wife, Terika, and their three children. Did I mention that's three children under five? So we can imagine the Cowan house is very chill, very quiet. He has a lot of free time. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Darrell Cowan, of Heal 901. All right. It indeed is a privilege to be in this space speaking to the families of those who have lost loved ones extremely tragically. And also understanding that even though we do this work, we're not oblivious to the feelings ourselves. Everybody done said we can hold out. The song was amazing by the choir. But when we think about it, grief is crazy, if I'm going to be honest about it. To me, grief is like these mosquitoes. I'm watching y'all fan and swat away right now. It comes, you swat it away, you think you're okay, and then all of a sudden while washing the dishes, it come back again. All of a sudden you at work and you hear a song, and all of a sudden it hits again in a wave, and people are telling you, you know what, you're going to be okay. Well, can I be honest with you? It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to say that today is not a good day for me. There are days where you just want to lay in the bed in a ball. You don't want to eat. You don't want none to drink. You don't want to talk to nobody. You've heard all the rhetoric that time will heal these things. Well, sometimes we ask the question, how long is this time that you're talking about? It's going to be all right in the morning. I done woke up several days and I'm still mourning in the morning. When I'm looking at this, I'm, you're talking about somebody who does this work, but still lost two family members, myself, tragically, to gun violence this year. And you still have to present yourself as a whole individual, even though on the inside you are broken, you're torn up, your thoughts are everywhere. You done felt every emotion that you didn't even know exists from, from hurt to anger to pain to, to frustration. I understand. But I want to let you know it's okay to not be okay, but it's also okay to give yourself some room to heal. For me personally, even starting this organization came from my own personal pain. In 2009, my uncle was tragically murdered in Richmond, Virginia. And if you know about communities in Memphis, you know an uncle is not just an uncle, that's the first father figure that some of us are even introduced to. 
So I thought about it. What can I do now that I lost this influence in my life? And I said, I'm going to go help every young man that I can find so they can have a positive role model, somebody that they can look up to. That means that I had to look at myself and do an analysis of myself and look at the places that I could change and I could be better. And I'm telling you that my strength doesn't just come from being able to do this work. It comes from the young people and the families that are still striving to make a difference on a daily basis in uncomfortable spaces. When I was going through my period and, you know, uh, of grief, and I'm telling you, it hits in waves. One of the things that I remember reading was the 23rd Psalm. That's one of them familiar passages for everybody, right? But the most important part of that passage with me was surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know what you're going through, and I don't know how you may feel at this present moment, but I do want to tell you that surely goodness and mercy does follow, even after tragic events that we have experienced. And sometimes you have to take that pain that you feel and use it to fuel you to be a better version of yourself to do something different. On days that I struggle and I don't know what to do, I think about what my family would tell me. Bro, go make something happen. Don't sit and cry for me. Go make something happen for me. If you want to do something for me, can you be the change that we need to see so families don't keep feeling the same way that you feel right now? Are there ways that we can impute ourselves in the community to really make a difference? We can sit and look at government and say it's government fault. We can sit and look at the church and say it's the church fault. But honestly, all of us have a place to be able to make Memphis the place that we know it needs to be. Sometimes our healing is going to come from just doing those things. It hurts. It's uncomfortable. You're going to feel upset many days. You're going to feel confused many days. People will tell you, don't. Don't question God. Well, I, can I tell you another truth that I had? I didn't have nobody else to question but God. Because everybody else don't have the answers. They'll fill me with a whole lot of rhetoric that I done heard for the last 38 years of my life. But I realized that holding on to God's unchanging hand is what powered me to say, you know what? That this is going to get better. It's going to get better because I'm going to make it better. I'm not going to keep being in this position. This situation is not going to continuously happen. And to be able to be in a space where our government is not only recognizing this, but working diligently. I see them all the time working aggressively. But to be honest with you, they need our help. They need us to stop following codes that really don't apply to us. If you see something, say something. If you see something, say something. This whole code of snitching, and I, I understand that's a street code, but I'm going to tell you the truth. As a civilian, enjoy being a civilian and say something. If we want to change our communities, we can't sit and keep watching things happen. We have to be a part of the change. You see, the communities that don't have the problem that some of us have is because they're diligent on making sure that they're saying something. Real briefly, I remember my grandmother, she just passed in January. And I used to look at that lady like she was crazy because I promise you, I thought that this woman was the neighborhood watch all by herself. She would sit there out her window and see stuff going on. She's going to grab that cordless phone and stand in front of the door while making the call, watching them wherever they go. And soon as they got done and the police finally came, grandma walked herself right on down there where they was at to see what was going on. Hey, we need those type of things to happen back in our community. Our babies deserve it. Our loved ones deserve it. And let's prepare ourselves to make that change happen. That's how we heal. We heal by helping others in the same space that we're in. I found my healing coming from just assisting people to make sure that families don't have to keep doing this and keep feeling this. I can't wait till the day that Shelby County don't have to do events like this again. It's okay to not be okay. Give yourself permission to heal. Take that pain that you feel every day. 
and use it as fuel and power to make sure that others don't have to feel the same. Thank you for your time. Well, good evening. And I'm here to just offer some words of, of thanks and gratefulness. So Lee Harris on behalf of Shelby County. First, I want to say uh, how grateful I am for Mr. Cowan and those remarks. Let's give him another round of applause. Maybe. I may be a little bit taller than he is. And at the same time, I, I want to say uh, thanks to Community Services, Director Bromley, and all the folks who organized this event. I'm grateful to the law enforcement officials and other elected officials, DA Mulroy, for being here. Let's give them all a round of applause for being here. And by the way, uh, thanks to God, because the weather is beautiful uh, this evening. And finally, I want to say something to the, to the families, the survivors who are here. Uh, thank you for, for being here. Thank you for being part of our community in Memphis and Shelby County. I know, first of all, that many of you have been in this community for a very long time. And so thank you for your steadfastness, for your commitment uh, to Memphis and Shelby County. We need more folks like you who are committed to the neighborhoods, who are committed to this city, and who are committed to our community. So we appreciate all of you. At the same time, I want to say uh, thank you for your strength. And so when I say strength at an event like this, I'm not talking about uh, you know, that, that, that all of us don't grieve and we don't have losses and that we mourn those losses when they are upon us. I don't mean that there's a problem with yelling out in the night or a problem with uh, tears as they come. But by strength in front of this audience, what I'm talking about is your resilience, is that everybody here has somehow, some way with God's grace decided that they could continue on. And so there's a lot of power in that. And so thank you for your resilience, for your ability to keep on going. And thank you for your hearts, uh, because it's in our hearts that we store the things that are most valuable to all of us, the memory of our loved ones and the things that we cherish most. And the good thing about storing those memories there is that as long as our hearts are still beating, we keep going, and that memory is alive. It's a blessing that we've had an opportunity to interact with those loved ones while they were living, and we promise that their legacy will continue as it continues through all of us. Thanks very much. Good evening. Thank you so much, Mayor Harris, for your words, for your time, and for your leadership. We're grateful for you. Next, I'd like to welcome Tereda Aranda. She is our bilingual counselor, uh, excuse me, our bilingual victim advocate on the cross services team at CDRCC. Come on up, Nareda. Thank you, Kyra. And hello, everyone. Healing after a traumatic loss is nowhere near easy. It takes courage to heal. Or as Jack Hornfield said, it takes courage to grieve, to honor the pain we carry. We can grieve in tears or in meditative silence, in prayer or in song. In touching the pain of recent and long held griefs, we come face to face with our gen genuine human vulnerability, with helplessness and hopelessness. These are the storm clouds of the heart. As Darrell talked about, granting yourself permission to heal is something that you must allow yourself to do. We offer our support with these boxes of courage, which you have the capability to open, read, and share. Remember, we also offer support with our grief counseling group and individual counseling. Informational flyers are at the check-in table. But today, we would like to share these boxes of courage. And like these boxes, 
Courage comes in all sizes, big, medium, and small. As you think about healing, remember that courage is important uh, is an important part of the process, and you must give yourself that permission to heal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Arena, for the, the lovely reminder that the courage that we seek and it might not sometimes feel that we have is within all of you. So don't forget that. Next, as Katera mentioned, September 25th is the National Day of Remembrance for Murder Victims. So I'd like to ask you to join me in a moment of silence while we honor those that were taken from us too soon. Thank you all for holding space for those that you love so deeply. Next, we're lucky enough for another selection from Shelby County Choir. Come on up.
no, 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 recognize some special guests who have been so kind to join us this evening and to do this will be Cross Services team supervisor Tina Gray with over 20 years of dedicated service to our county and our clients. Tina. Thank you Kara. I'm here to recognize special guests. Before I do anything I just want to thank all of you for having the courage to come out here today. We know that this is not one of those events like the real stated earlier that anybody wants to have to attend. But we're so glad that we have this space available and for you to come out and just share and be with others who have lost loved ones as well. And with that being said, we would just like to thank the Memphis Botanic Garden they have been so gracious and accommodating each year, allowing us to have this event here. And so we have Michael Strickland and Kent Thomas. They have been instrumental in helping us set up and, and do all the things that you see out here. And also we have volunteers. We couldn't do any of this without volunteers. It really takes a load off. So we want to thank Kat McRitchie, She's the Social Studies Department Chair and Academic Programs Lead with Crosstown High School. And we want to thank her and all her volunteers that are out here. They're all around, so you might not just see them right now. And we definitely want to thank our very own Shelby County Mayor, Mayor Lee Harris. And also in the audience, and I hope I don't miss anyone. If I do, please forgive me now. But... I just want to recognize Chief Davis. And we have Caroline Beasley here on the front row. We have DA Moroy. Thank you for attending. And again, I want to just, can you give me a help me give a round of applause to our speaker, Mr. Darrell Cowan? <laughs> Let me point over here to our Shelby County Choir. Give it up for them, you all. Awesome job. Thank you. And I have Mr. C.L. Williams with Greater Memphis Appearance of Murder Children. And 
Raise your hand if you're out here. I want to give special thanks to our hardworking staff at the Crime Victims and Rape Crisis Center, CVRCC. <laughs> Tie-dye shirts and everything out there. And to the Division of, the, uh, Division of Community Services, and definitely a special thanks to our Division of Community Services Director, Sandy Bromley. <laughs> Sandy is always supportive. She always asks us, what do you need? What can I help with? Although she has been promoted several times, she's still here with us. <laughs> she's still out here working and, and doing all those things that we definitely enjoy. So thank you, Sandy, for all of your support. And thank you, everyone. And now I'll pass it on. Have a good night. Thank you, Tina, and thank you to everyone again so much. Next, we're going to have some announcements by Miranda Coley. She is my fellow crime victim advocate on the Cross Services team here at CDRCC, followed by benediction from Pastor Freeman um, to end out the evening and once we're done, you can follow the lights for some refreshments. So Miranda, some announcements, please. Okay. I'm a little short, sorry. <laughs> All right, good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to share a few announcements for you guys before we depart. So in honor of National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, the CBRCC Domestic Violence Program will be hosting a Let's Talk, which is an informational meeting about order of protection. For dates and locations, please check our check-in table to your left. Also, Chapter Leader C.L. Tim Williams of the Greater Memphis Parents of Murdered Children chapter would like to invite all of you to their 12th annual Black and White Affair. It will be at will be Friday, November 8th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. You can go to the Eventbrite for more information and to register for this event. Following the benediction, we will have light refreshments, like Kara mentioned, to your left under the Vulcan Shelter. Thank you all so much. Have a great and wonderful night. Pastor Freeman. And before Pastor Freeman comes up, I was, I guess I need my glasses and contacts on. So I left a couple of people off, and I just could not leave tonight without also recognizing all these officers back here. Look on your back, those that are standing up here. Our Memphis Police Department Homicide Division. Thank you all so much. And we also have the Victim Services Unit here. I definitely want to thank them. There's Camille and the rest of the team back there. I said I don't have glasses and contacts on, so I'm gonna miss you. And also the victim, I said DA Moro, but the victim witness unit and all the victim, the DA's office, all the staff, we collaborate. Those are our partners, so we definitely want to recognize you. So. Okay, Pastor Freeman, come on up. I would just like to say thanks once again to Ms. Gray for the invitation. Our church partners with uh, the unit to host a lot of the uh, holiday grief sessions at our church. And I have been moved each and every time just listening to the testimonies and listening to the strength of the survivors. And so I just continue to pray for your healing. I continue to pray for your recovery. And I continue to pray for your journey in, during this time of grief. Shall we pray? Lord, as we gather here on tonight and prepare to leave, we ask that you would just bless us with your love. Heal our brokenness. That we may be true signs of that love. As we leave from this place, continue to be with us. Guide us on how to serve those who struggle with this life along with all those who love and support them. Bless God and heal us only as you know how, 
now and always. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and with respect to all of the faiths who are gathered here on tonight, let us all say amen.